Ballot 80, the general election. This program featuring candidates for the 42nd Congressional District. Your moderators are Gloria Penner and Judith Wolf. Welcome to Ballot 80, a series of programs designed to provide you with more information about the candidates who wish to represent you in public office so that you can vote more wisely on November 4th. This program the side features the candidates in this, uh, running in, the in this race would like to have an idea of what your economic priority would be. Um, and if we had to select one, would it be to balance the budget, more tax cuts, reduce government spending, or creation of jobs and productivity? Okay. I would say this. The Republican philosophy this year, and I, I agree with Mr. Kemp's philosophy, and it's incidentally backed by many Democrats, is that the economy is a dynamic thing. It's a dynamic economy. We can, have a, we can increase our productivity and beat inflation, and if we have a tax cut, we will actually broaden the tax base and we'll be able to finance our defense programs and our social programs. And it's now, an optimistic outlook. I would ask the same question of you, Congressman Van Dierlin. What is, in terms well, of your one, economic of priority? is employment, and that's, that's where you really get your deficits if you don't have full employment. Uh, we thought that we were inching close to a balanced budget this year, and then we were a little slower coming out of this recession than had been anticipated. And for every percentage point of unemployment, people who are, instead of paying taxes as wage earners, they are, in effect, tax eaters through uh, unemployment insurance or welfare. Uh, it runs the deficit up about, for every percentage point, about 18 to 20 billion dollars. Do you believe in public creation of jobs, or do you think the private sector should be responsible for this or a combination of the two? Well, in a compassionate country, you cannot let vast numbers of people be without work. But I would have to agree that ultimately the, the burden and the hope must lie with private enterprise, which will be stimulated by the Kemp uh, government Roth tax, tax cut. <laughs> Kemp Roth, Kemp Roth would, would be worse honest than the Arabs with their uh, oil embargo in stimulating an inflation in this country. I don't know. And it's interesting uh, that in let, 1964. Let me, let me address that question briefly. What is dishonest and what is a free lunch about letting the average guy come home with a little more of the money in his pocket that he earned. We're not saying we're going to give him a free thing. We're saying we're not, the government's not going to take away quite as much as they're taking right now. That's absolutely fair and absolutely good. Mr. Van and I get the same thing, and every time I go down to NASCO or Roar or General Dynamics or down in the streets campaigning among people, the average worker is very concerned about the amount of money that he is, is making and the amount of money that is taken by the government. I talked to a lady yesterday at Southwest Marine who was complaining because she made she she got a thirty dollar a week pay increase and yet immediately six of that went out in taxes okay. she got a net increase of fourteen dollars mr van Dierlen, your response well it's we're talking about tax policy revenues are on one side expenses on the other if you suddenly cut off thirty billion dollars in revenues over three years there is simply no way that you can approach a balanced budget it won't happen it won't happen because we already have such a deficit. The point is, <laughs> these, these uh, Republican uh, tax proposals, you know, which are picking up from a Democratic era where we had other factors at work, uh, were simply not being voiced by Republican candidates in 1964. But these tax proposals are backed by some of the most prestigious economists in the country and some of the best economists and some of the economists with the most tried and true record. They're backed by people without any responsibility for the government of the United States. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please do vote on November 4th.